What's up guys, my name is Josh and welcome to a review of the FIO F9. Now, if you missed Monday's video, uh, the winner of the FIO F9 was Bill Pham from Twitter. Thank you very much, Bill, for entering as well as everybody else. And uh, as promised, Bill, this is probably actually already in the mail on its way to you. Now, as an ongoing thing of this channel, the FIO F9 will actually be a recommendation that I will bring up a lot and maybe even compare other headphones against. And the reason why is because it's got portability, discretion, build quality, and sound quality locked down at a reasonable price. And it's got kind of all the major components that one would want from an IEM without being too expensive. And the thing about the F9 is that if it can't beat its competition in one particular area, it can beat it in another. Say, sacrificing comfort for replaceable cables, or sacrificing lightweight for a robust and durable build. It's really a bunch of small things that add up to an overall impressive package. Now, portability on this device is easy and as are most IEMs. So for portability, these IEMs will almost always get a pass from me because they're simply so easy to just fold up and put in a pocket. Now the overhook design of these ears is something that will go slightly against portability compared to a standard earbud. See, they do have to go around your ear and, and then they get inserted into your ear. And in this particular case, the uh, actual cables here are fairly stiff and they're not very malleable. So what that adds up to is if you did bend them the wrong way, I think that they would permanently kind of have a little bend or a kink in that line. And doing that time after time after time is not really gonna be hugely beneficial to the headphones in my opinion. Now regarding what actually comes in the box, you get a hard plastic carry case, you get six sets of ear tips that are of varying sizes, none of which are foam, which I did find odd. So if you do like foam, you will have to buy them aftermarket. Um, and an interesting addition being a braided balanced cable and that came all in here. Now it is a, I think it's a 2.5 millimeter balance cable and that connection probably doesn't seem too common to a lot of you and that would be found most likely on digital audio players. So some of those daps, um, a lot of those have a balanced 2.5 millimeter. Now the actual ear tips themselves will come in red or the edition that is actually in here is black and I do like the black edition a little bit better. I think the red looks definitely cool but the black edition is a little bit more discreet. So if you're on the street, you're not gonna draw as much attention to yourself as you would with red. Not that it's a huge amount of attention, but it's it's not much. And I think the slightly grooved design on the outside is subtle and adds kind of a nice texture and a nice look to the device without being completely overstated. Now there is one big sacrifice that you are going to have to make for comfort. And that sacrifice and comfort comes from the area that you would mount the actual silicone tip to. Uh, it is metal, it does not bend, it does not flex and it is quite large. And for certain ear canals that are maybe on the smaller side, this is going to be either uncomfortable or not going to fit at all. And there's really no getting around that even with smaller tips because the center circumference is quite large compared to some other IEMs, for example, the Mastrop EDC 1 and 3. Now, as well-built as these are, I am faced with a simple conclusion that this simply isn't going to fit everybody's ears. Some people, it's going to be extremely uncomfortable, and some people, it's flat out not going to fit. And I kind of wish Feel would have perhaps considered that when making the design, because one of the widest parts in the area is like a little lip to actually hold on the ear tip. I think if you create a high enough tolerance ear tip to where it's tight, you don't need something like that. And you still wouldn't run a really big risk of the ear tip falling off and it would be a lot more comfortable to a lot more people. So that's one gripe I have and it's a major gripe and it's gonna be completely off the table for certain people. Now that's just about it for the physical build. It's, it's a metal housing, it's robust, it's strong and uh, Honestly, I feel like you could sit on these and they wouldn't break. Oh, also, <laughs> quick side note, uh, I live in Washington and it's cold and I like the cold, but these things are made of metal. So in the morning, if you're not prepared for it and you stick these in your ear, they are so cold. <laughs> like, they're so cold, man. So the build quality is impressive, right? The accessories are impressive. The balance cable is definitely a nice added addition and not something that you would see too often. But at the end of the day, it's really all about sound quality and, and how it holds up in that area. Because when it comes down to it, you're going to be listening to this device. That's just what you're going to be doing with it. So if it doesn't hold up in the sound department, we sort of have an issue. These come in at $100 and I would say that the sound is worth $100 and not really anything more. It is passable in all areas without being problematic in any particular area. It doesn't have any major concerns. Uh, there is a slight sibilance area uh, when you're talking about the S's. The S sound is is slightly sibilant, but all the other treble ranges, all the other singing frequencies of you know the human vocal range seems to be very 
well-tempered except for that slight S problem. It does have a sound signature that leans towards a more clean and analytical feel. This is not a bass heavy headphone. This is not a vocal centralized headphone. It is slightly V-shaped, although the bass response avoids boominess and avoids bloom in that area. And the treble response is actually fairly good in terms of its output, in terms of its delivery, but in terms of its texture and detail, it does feel a little bit lacking to me. Now, when you put these on and you just listen to a track that just doesn't have a lot of sub bass, you'd actually be surprised by the amount of sub bass that it has because these deliver both a clean sound signature to what I like. I think it's a very clean sound, but then they can also go really, really low in terms of the sub bass. And that sub bass, which is slightly boosted between the 50 to 100 hertz area, actually starts to kind of slope down a little bit towards the mid range uh, when it gets to the mid bass area. And this avoids that bloominess effect that a lot of times is attributed with heavy bass headphones. They feel very bloomy. You know, think like the lower end headphones like Skull Candy. The reason why they have so much bass is not because of the sub bass, it's usually more to do with the actual mid bass just being overpowering and blooming out into all the other frequencies. Now the vocals, although nicely separated, is one major complaint I do have with this headphone. They are fairly recessed. There isn't a whole lot of texture or detail there. And in certain songs like uh, Shorefire by John Legend, one of my test songs where I test a very prominent vocalist, but it also has very low notes in the song and very high notes. And I see what takes kind of precedent. This falls a little bit behind. It doesn't quite have the vocal forwardness and the vocal isolation that I would have liked to see. And on top of that, it does lack a fair bit of detail and texture when it comes to vocals. Now, the more analytical feel of this headphone actually comes from the lower end, the below 10K area of treble. That area is very forward. Above that area, it kind of slopes off quite a bit. You kind of have a few rises and dips in that area, but overall, it's, it's fairly recessed and you're not gonna be hearing a whole lot of air and you're not really gonna be hearing a whole lot of micro detail compared to a higher end yet more expensive headphones. So in the treble department, you're pretty much getting what you pay for, for about $100 and, and not really anything extra. Now, disregarding the, the sibilance in the S area, uh, below 10K does come across fairly aggressively, but I wouldn't really consider it to be bright. It's just very confident uh, treble performance. Now, it's something that I personally like, but not everybody is going to. And this headphone does kind of have this sort of V-shaped sound signature and it's not extreme. There are definitely more extreme examples and you know, you wouldn't have to look very hard to find them, but it is subtle. It's kind of a subtle V-shape, almost like a U-shaped sound signature. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I think, <laughs> I think audiophiles give the V-shaped sound signature a lot of hate. I don't really see it. I think it's a nice pleasing sound signature to a lot of people and if you like it, it's all about what you enjoy. Now, imaging, soundstage, bass, treble, mid-range, it's all pretty middle of the road. Uh, there really isn't an area where I feel like it's particularly impressive, nor is there an area where I feel like it's particularly displeasing. Everything you get with this headphone sound-wise is kind of right in the middle, but what puts it on that recommendations list that I was talking about is kind of the overall package. The included balance cable, the carry case, the accessories, the build quality is a huge one. Even though I don't think they're gonna be comfortable for all ears, they're gonna be very comfortable for a lot of people. And you know, when you're getting into a metal housing compared to a lot of plastic housings in this price range, um, it does tend to stand out. So to wrap up the F9, overall, I think it's an impressive package. I think that if you got this, you wouldn't be disappointed with it. Do I think it's the pinnacle of sound quality? No. Am I impressed by all of the components and all the aspects of it together? Yes, I am. I do think it's an impressive overall package, but for it to be impressive, you do have to be in it for the overall package, not just sitting at home, listening to the pinnacle of sound quality. I think there might be better options out there. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, I wanna thank Fio for sending this out and letting me give this away to one of my viewers. And uh, there will be more giveaways in the future. You can check all the current pricings and my other recommended headphones in the link down below. And if you're not subscribed already, stay tuned for a comparison between the Fio F9 and the Mastrop EDC 3, kind of in that $100 price bracket area. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for your time. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.